Hi, my name is Anika. I'm super interested in alternative energy, and today I'm going to be using my working model of a wind turbine to demonstrate how certain factors and variables affect the amount of electricity that we can produce and harness. Let's get into it. So here is our wind turbine model. We have a set of blades, a motor, and of course two wires that would usually connect to something like a bulb. But for today's purpose, we're going to be using a multimeter to measure the amount of current that comes out when we change certain variables. But how does a wind turbine work? Let's take a look at our model again. All you gotta remember is one thing. Wind turbines convert the kinetic energy from wind into rotational energy, which is used to generate electricity. So this is done by taking advantage of the force of lift that results from the wind that's blowing on the blades. So when this wind blows across the blades, it causes them to rotate. And then with that, the rotor also rotates. And the rotor is connected to two shafts. So one shaft is called the low speed shaft and there's also the high speed shaft. And in between these two shafts is a gearbox. And the gearbox's purpose is to increase the rotational speed of the low speed shaft and increase the rotations per minute, also called RPM. So now the turbine can produce electricity because the high speed shaft is connected to a generator which produces AC current. And then this current flows through a cable and through a turbine tower so that it can be distributed. Now let's get to the fun part of experimenting. Factor number one, wind speed. Now I know this one might seem obvious, but it's one of the most important things that decide how much electricity is produced. So we're going to grab our fans and use the three settings of speed on there to see how it affects the amount of current that flows through the circuit. So results from test number one were as expected. As the speed of the fan got faster and there was more wind, the current also increased. The next thing we're going to test is nearness to buildings and other structures. So usually when people build wind turbines, they obviously have to put them on land that is A, unused, but also very far away from other buildings because you get the most electricity and highest wind speeds and more access to wind when there are no obstructions in your way. So I'm going to see how my obstructions, which are the container of dishwasher soap and a little box here, I'm going to see how that affects the current. So this goes to show that you need open land. Test number three changing the size and shape of the wind turbine blades. So in theory, increasing the swept area, which is basically the area of the circle that the wind turbine blades create, should increase the power output of the wind turbine because when the rotor area doubles, the turbine output also doubles. So let's see if that holds true. So this is our other design. We've used paper to create more area and we have wood, what are they called, popsicle sticks instead of cardboard. So let's see how it performs in comparison to the other design. The results from this experiment definitely shocked me. It's crazy to think that this design only produced around 30 milliamps while this tinier one produced 53 milliamps. So I think this really goes to show that while Increasing the size of the blades is super important because usually bigger is always better when it comes to wind turbines. Sometimes this, the material that you use for the blades can actually, like the weight of it, it sacrifices the power output if it's too heavy. So I think that since more energy was required to actually spin these popsicle stick blades compared to the cardboard blades, that was the reason for having a lower output. Now, using some good old math, we're going to determine the amount of extractable power from wind given our wind turbine and its swept area. So this equation basically takes into account 
a series of variables such as air density, swept area, the wind speed, and also something called the power coefficient, which is basically just the efficiency of a wind turbine. So that will be at around 0.4. So given our wind turbine, the equation is going to be half times the air density. I've just used the average, which is around 1.23 kilograms per meter cube. And then the swept area actually uses uh, meters squared. The swept area of our turbine is 0 0.02 meters um, squared. And then we have the wind speed. I'm just going to say the speed is around 50 kilometers per hour. And we have to cube that and then multiply it by the power coefficient. And that gives us a total of 13.5 watts. So there you have it. That's the amount of power that can be extracted from the wind using our turbine and assuming that the wind was at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour, which right now is pretty unrealistic. But anyways, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you understood why certain places on earth are better for wind turbines than others and how many factors go into deciding whether or not we should build a wind turbine at a specific location. I hope that you enjoyed and do leave a comment or a like or check out my article down below and I will see you next time in Anika's Alley.